I am at a very unique orchard today in Hood River with Rachel from Clear Creek Distillery. And you have a very unique product that goes along with this orchard. Mm -hmm. What is it? Well, we're famous for our pear brandy. And in France, this would be called Eau de Vie de Poire. And we have taken empty bottles and carefully placed the empty bottles on the trees and grown the pear inside the bottle. And then we fill it with our famous pear brandy. Ah, so this week, that's really what happened, is you took all the empty bottles and attached them to the pears so that they can grow all season and then you harvest later in the year. Mm -hmm. So what happened this week? Well, just a couple days ago when the pears were a little bit smaller, we came up here and we first need to determine which of the pear set is going to be the king pear or the dominant pear. Uh -huh. If you don't choose the right one, the pear will, or the tree will usually shed the fruit naturally the thinning process so you need to figure out which one so mm -hmm. it's a guessing game and you said you do about 75 percent of the pears actually do make it into the bottles yep it's pretty good all right so which one would you choose well it looks like mm, looks like this guy is going to be our dominant pair okay so i'm going to carefully shed these secondary pairs all right you just snap them off mm -hmm. All right, very gently. Mm -hmm. All right, now you have one left. Mm -hmm. Take off the leaves. Yep. So earlier in the season, we've tied twine on the bottles, pre-twined them, mm -hmm. so we're ready to go. And we carefully slip that little developing pear into the bottle, place it right in the center of the bottle so it has room to grow. And just tie it right above and tie it up. And how come you do it with the uh, bottom of the bottle facing up? Well, we don't want the rainwater or the mm. irrigation water to collect in the bottle. If the pear sits in the water, it'll crack. We also need to secure the neck. Yeah, it's pretty windy up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you don't get too much breakage, which is really interesting because it is so windy here. Well, we've secured it pretty well. It's secured on the end of the bottle mm -hmm. and on the neck of the bottle. If we do two next to each other, I, I try to tie them together to avoid smashing. And on some of them we've noticed, it's early in the morning, so there's a lot of condensation in the bottle, and is that a problem? No, as the, uh, as the sun comes out and the, it heats up, we're pretty early in the day right now, the uh, condensation will dry up. Ah. And then later on you said that you put little sunbonnets on them, so what is that mm -hmm. about? Well, the bottom of the bottle can act like a lens. And you'll see some other bottles in the orchard that are already getting burned by the, by the sun or potentially burned. So probably later today or tomorrow, I'll cut the bottoms off of some wine bags <laughs> okay. and take some special UV uh, rubber bands and carefully slip them on and make little sun bonnets for the pair on the bottles. So it even looks more unique then. Yeah. <laughs> so then what happens once you, um, once you get the fruits all ready to go and you're ready to harvest? Well, we'll look for the, the biggest ones first and we'll carefully give them a little pull to the, to the neck of the bottle, a little tug and a little twist, and ideally they pop right off at the uh, top of the stem. Not always, but that's our, that's our plan. And then you have to clean them and mm -hmm. get them all ready for actually the pear brandy to go in, which mm -hmm. is the best part. Yeah, we take them down to the distillery in Portland. Uh, that day, we have test tube brushes that are curved to the shape of the pear. We carefully clean them inside the bottle, rinse them out, and fill them with our pear brandy. Ah. So, Rachel, not only do you have the pear brandy, you also have an apple brandy. Mm -hmm. We also grow apples in the bottles, and we fill them with our two-year barrel-aged apple brandy, mm. also called Eau de Vie de Palm. Uh, so really, if you want to try these, you can go to the, the distillery down in Portland and try them, or you can go to the events calendar on their website and see what's going on. And what's the, uh, um, the website called? www.clearcreekdistillery.com. And our tasting room is open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5, and we do tastings. Ah, uh, that just sounds wonderful. Well, thank you so much for having us out. It's really been a great day. You're welcome. Thank you.